When President Ronald Reagan was in his 20s, he was a uh, pretty hardcore liberal. He uh, campaigned and pushed uh, liberal issues. He supported all the liberal Democrats. Um, but Ronald Reagan was a common sense guy. That's what people liked about him. And uh, he just looked at the situations and the issues and he realized that all these social programs and, and all these uh, Democrat liberal ideas, you know, spending money uh, the way they did and um, all these programs that were supposed to help the poor and the needy and the oppressed actually hurt them. And he did a 180 and became a very conservative politician. And he famously joked uh, when they asked him why he was a liberal in his 20s. Uh, he said a quote that I always use. It's kind of funny. He said, um, if you're not a liberal in your 20s, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative in your 40s, you have no brain. <laughs> but apparently, um, it's not a joking matter. Apparently, um, it's a serious issue. According to Pew Research, a scientific study done by a PhD candidate uh, in 2020, March 2020, you can look this up, 56.6% of liberal women between the ages of 18 and 29, women that identify themselves as liberal, are being treated for mental illness. Mental illness is not something to joke about. It's a serious, uh, it's a serious health issue that needs to be addressed. But this explains a lot. And... You know, the, the, the liberal media, and when I say the liberal media, I'm talking ABC, NBC, CBS. I mean, that's, you know, the Marxist media, I would say CNN, MSNBC, but the liberal progressive media who will always put their bias spin, always leave out part of the story to fit their narrative. They are exploiting these women. They are exploiting these women. And what's scary is these irrational people uh, with mental illness are in Congress. And this would explain why someone like AOC, you know, you think, you know, is, is she really serious about her beliefs or is she just a Marxist? But I think she really believes and really does get emotional about the most irrational things. Like, I'll give you an example. For example, in 2019, police officers in America killed 26 unarmed white people. In that same year, they killed 12 unarmed black people. Now, that's a tragedy. 25 unarmed people should not have been killed. Those cops should uh, face punishment for that, either incompetence or, um, or, or just, you know, being evil. I don't know. But 25 unarmed people killed... When there's hundreds of millions, I think something like 300 million police interactions a year, that's a great record. I will compare that record to any other country in the world and brag about that record. Yet, we have politicians saying, defund the police. Okay, I grew up in the hood. Where if you, t if you defund the police and we have less police, the people who it's going to hurt are going to be the poor the African-American community, the Hispanic community. It's not going to be these rich people that live in nice neighborhoods. So it's irrational. You're saying you want to help the poor and you want to take away the protection. And I just show you how irrational it is. That was, what's that come out to? 25 people? That was 2019. Uh, 2020 was similar. I forget the exact number, but it was very close to that. Last weekend in Chicago was a normal weekend and 26 black people were killed. More black people were killed in one weekend. But because it was kill they were killed by other black people, it didn't fit the narrative that these liberals want us to feel. They don't, they didn't, it didn't fit the narrative. It, it didn't make people angry and emotional. They had to say, these evil white cops are killing black people because they're racist. And instead of toning things down and being rational... We have a president, President Biden comes out after the George, George Floyd, and it was a verdict, and, and they, they ruled, and justice was served. This man killed a man, uh, 
and he got he got sentenced to murder. Instead of saying, "Okay, justice was served," the justice, you know, America, you know, we have the best justice system in the world. It's not perfect, but it's the best. It's the fairest. Instead, Joe Biden comes out and says, "We have systematic racism. This whole country is racist." You know, Ob- President Obama stirred racism. You know, because. Democrats use this identity politics to get elected and they, they got to divide and, and say, you know, the white people in America are bad. You know, you got to vote for me. I'll help blacks. I'll help, you know, LGBTQ, whatever. So Obama did play the race card, but nothing like Joe Biden is playing. Joe Biden should be called the divider in chief for real because he comes out and calls the whole country racist. And then he calls out the whole police department saying there's systematic racism. So when he says systematic racism, he's saying the whole system is racist, that every cop is racist. You know, my son-in-law is a cop. He's not racist. I know plenty of cops. They're not racist. I know plenty of people. They're not racist. You know, in the real world, in the blue collar world, black and white people work together all day long. Black people are my boss sometimes. Sometimes white people are their bosses. No one looks at race. The only people that talk about race are the liberals that are stoking this division. And unfortunately, there's a lot of women with mental illness that see, oh my God, this country is racist. And they're probably giving them more mental illness, you know? And, and I just remember back when, you know, I'm 55. I remember being like 19 and 20 in the Navy and um, I was uh, worked in the supply department. And, uh, you know, we had civilian oversight. So if I had to, uh, if my, if I had to order something over $1,000, I had to get it approved by the civilian um, supply department. So I would go in and show the, the manager and he would sign off on it. And then I'd have to give it to one of the women. There was about 10, 15 women working in there. And I would say 90% of them were liberals. And we would have some heated debates. But we liked each other. We would laugh. We would joke. But we would debate abortion, we would deb- uh, debate uh, homosexual marriage, we would debate uh, gays in the military, at the time they weren't allowed, we would debate, um, you know, women staying home, taking care of their children, these were all feminists out working, um, and we had total opposite views, but we could be friends to the point where when I got out of the Navy, I walked in there like my last week and they had a cake for me and they all gave me a hug. Oh, I'm going to miss you, Rob. Good luck. God bless. Blah, 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 blah. And we were friends. And that's how it used to be. I mean, Ronald Reagan was probably our most conservative president we ever had up until Donald Trump. Tip O'Neill was a liberal Democrat. He was the Speaker of the House. Yet every Friday they went out for drinks at the local pub to discuss issues. And in fact, Ronald Reagan threw, speaking of throwing a party, Ronald Reagan threw a birthday party for Tip O'Neill. Okay, what happened? Well, I think my observation, people that were attracted to politics and, and uh, people like myself, who, who I wasn't a politician, but I was aware, you know, I was a, a political nerd. I knew what was going on. We liked to debate. We liked to engage. We liked ideas. We liked to hear all the people's ideas. We had the kind of personality, maybe call it a thick skin, where we didn't take it personal. But now with the advent of social media, you have so many people that don't have that thick skin being exposed to politics. And they don't have the history of seeing uh, how politicians use them uh, emotionally to get them to vote for them. They don't realize what's, they're being manipulated. So you have so many people just getting angry. So many, and, and, and it's, you know, unfortunately, mostly young people, the 18 to 29. You know, they didn't do a study on men. I'm sure it's probably similar. 18 to 29 year old male liberals are probably mostly, uh, you know, have more mental illness than the same age of conservatives. I mean, this is scientific. I'm not, I'm not being mean. And, you know, lately I've been doing a lot of, uh, you know, since, I don't know, right after the election, I started doing more. Uh, videos, I I guess you would say religious videos, you could call them rather than political. Not because, you know, some people think it's because YouTube demonetized me and I'm trying to get monetized again. If they do monetize me, you'll see a commercial and praise the Lord, you know, be a little extra uh, change in my bank. But uh, that's not why I do it. I realized these people are hurting. I didn't realize they had mental illness, but I realized I was getting people very angry and um, I wasn't changing their minds with logic. 
The only thing that's going to change their mind is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why I've been preaching. We need them to have a relationship with God and God can change their heart. And once the heart is changed, then the mind is changed. And then you realize taking a, a human baby's life is evil. No matter what the liberal media uh, emotions they play on you saying that it's your choice. Don't let that mean white guy take your choice away from killing your own baby. So that's why I've been preaching it. And I'm still going to preach it because these poor women, I'm not making fun of these women. I know women with mental illness. They need help. And they need to know that God loves them unconditionally. And no matter what they've done in the past, God will forgive them. They just need to go to our loving father. And a lot of these women had abusive fathers, fathers that made them feel worthless. And I just want them to know the good news that the perfect father in heaven said they are worth the blood of God to them. And I think once these women realize their worth, they won't be manipulated. They won't be easily manipulated. And they won't have to depend on all these drugs that, you know, Sometimes you need medicine. I'm not knocking medicine, but most of the time they're over medicated and one medicine leads to another medicine that leads to another side effect. And by the time they get done with these psychiatrists, they're worse off than when they started. The psychiatrist they need is Jesus Christ. They need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So that's why my videos lately have been more religious because you know, the most important thing we can do as Catholics is save souls. The most important thing we can do as American is to, Americans is to save our civilization. If we save the soul of America, we can save our civilization with true religion. And speaking of true religion, um, I'm going to have Dr. Scott Hahn on in, uh, I think, a week or two weeks. So uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the uh, bell. So when I do post that video, you don't miss it because that's what we're going to talk about, saving our civilization. It's going to be a pretty deep conversation with this very smart man. And uh, also, if we're going to save our civilization, we need to see the dignity of every man, woman, child, and unborn child. So please, if you're buying or selling real estate, go to realestateforlife.org and tell them Blue Collar Catholic sent you. God bless and stay Catholic.